ask it for his sake. Amen. 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 Always in times like these, music comes to soothe our soul. Mm. It is that which belies our feelings and raises our consciousness to the melodious strands that soothe the angry beast within. And for that purpose, I now call upon Right Worshipful Lawrence Coleman, grand soloist of Pride of the Valley Lodge number 95, to render for us that which shall soothe us and lead us in the feelings that we deserve. Right, which will call you. God bless you. Thank you so much. In 1 Peter 2 and 7, mm. the stone that the builders rejected oh, yeah. has become the very head of the corner. And so for today, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. No man can do like Jesus, not a mumbling word he said. He went walking down to Lazarus' grave, and he raised him from the dead. Oh my goodness, he's a Jesus, he's a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, he's a shelter in the time of storm. When Jesus was on earth, the flesh was very weak. He girded himself on a towel. And he washed his disciples' feet. Oh my goodness, he's a Jesus, he's a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. Yonder comes my Savior, in whom I love so well. He has a palm of victory. And the keys of <laughs> a weary land, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. Oh my goodness, he's a Jesus, he's a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Is a shelter in the time of storm. God bless you. Amen. Amen. He truly is a rock in a weary land. Thank you so much, Right Worshipful. Now that you've set the tone and our hearts have felt and been lifted through your melodious tone, I now call upon one who is so capable, the right worshipful deputy grand master of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, right worshipful Jerry R. Ellison of Mount Calvary Lodge number 76, who will officially welcome you to this, our statewide annual Prince Hall Americanism Day, right worshipful deputy grand master Jerry Ellison. Thank you, Brother Springer. It is with great pleasure that I welcome each and every one of you to the first virtual Prince Hall Americanism Day. It was with great pleasure that I welcome you on behalf of the Honorable Chester C. Christie and all the trustees of the Most Wishful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the State of Ohio. We pray that something will be said or done 
today that will resonate on your mind and in your heart in the coming weeks will bring a smile to your face. We welcome you in brotherly love. God loves you and so do we. We welcome each and every one of you. Welcome. Thank you so much. And we will now at this time have a response from the Right Wishful Senior Grand Warden from Unity Lodge number 115, Right Worshipful Robert M. Estelle Jr. Thank you, Pastor Grand Patron Jerry D. Springer. On behalf of all the members of the Prince Hall family, we thank you for that hearty and warm felt welcome. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for us to assemble once again to have the opportunity to reflect on the legacy of one who did so much to begin this organization to make it what it is today. We thank you in that you have provided us some guidance and direction that we feel esteemed to be here in your presence. This is not only Prince Hall Day, but also Americanism Day. And sometimes in the midst of the challenges that we are facing today, sometimes becoming an American can be quite challenging. But we know that there is one who will continue to guide and direct us. So we ask that you continue to be patient with all of us. Give us your grace and your mercy. And we step back, sit back, relax, and enjoy this memorable program that the committee has put together. We thank you for the opportunity, and we look forward to your program. God bless you once, God bless you twice, and God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Right Worshipful Estelle. As we come together this day to celebrate the life and the legacy of our founder, Prince Hall, we have all been taught of the many attributes and the many virtues of his exemplary life. For we know that our founder faced many obstacles during his tenure as our founder. We know that he was first rejected and accepted and rejected again. And in fact, the history of this remarkable individual whom we revere is so replete that we felt it necessary that you should be enlightened by a bit of the history of this remarkable, remarkable individual. And for that purpose, we have solicited one who is ably and duly qualified to bring such information before us this day. I give you the grand historian of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, free and accepted Mason to bring us a bit of the history of this remarkable man whom we so revere, our patron saint, Prince Hall. I give you right worshipful Antonio O. Cathy, grand historian. Uh, thank you. First, giving honor um, and praises to the grand architect of the universe for allowing me to be here this afternoon. Uh, to most worshipful brother, Chester C. Christie, most worshipful grand master, and to the Master of Ceremony, Right Worshipful Brother Jerry D. Stringer, to all Grand Lodge officers past and present, and to all our brothers and sisters here assembled today, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for, again, allowing me to talk to you this afternoon about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that's the, the history of not only our beloved fraternity, but also Prince Hall himself. With well over 200 years uh, worth of history, it is something that should be continually researched and updated for the world to see, understand, and appreciate. I could detail the early life of our namesake, you know, discuss the early history of our fraternity and discuss many tidbits of information regarding the impact that he had on our society. However, I think this afternoon, what I would like to do, I'd like to focus my brief time with you to discuss what I think is a roadmap that I believe Prince Hall left us to deal with the current issues that we're facing in our nation today. In 1797, Prince Hall addressed the Brethren of African Lodge. He had 
addressed the brothers um, of that lodge five years prior um, through what he called a charge uh, to the Brethren of African Lodge. And he focused on, during that time, on the duties of a Freemason. In 1797, he turned his attention to what we should be doing within our society to elevate the plight of Black people in this country and come to some type of uh, re resolution on that. Brother Hall, in my opinion, focused on three key points, sympathy, patience, and pride. In detailing the plight of enslaved Africans in general and Black people in this country in particular, he stated, quote, we are to have sympathy, but this, after all, is not to be confined to parties or colors, nor to towns or states, nor to a kingdom, but to the kingdoms of the whole earth, over whom Christ the King is head and grand master for all in distress, unquote. Brother Hall didn't care where the suffering was occurring. No matter where on earth you may have found it, we should sympathize with those that are suffering. He also stated that, quote, among these numerous sons and daughters of distress, let us see our friends and brethren. During this charge, Prince Hall also stated, quote, now my brethren, nothing is stable. All things are changeable. Let us seek those things which are sure and steadfast, and let us pray God that while we remain here, he would give us the grace of patience and strength to bear up under all our troubles, which at this day, God knows we have our share of. He then stated patience, I say, for were we not possessed of a great measure of it, we could not bear up under the daily insults we meet within the streets of Boston, much more on public days of recreation. How at such times are we shamefully abused and that to such a degree that we may truly be said to carry our lives in our hands and the arrows of death are flying about our heads. When you are in the middle eye of the tornado brothers and sisters, it may seem as though the whirling winds will never end. However, patience has taught us to be steadfast in our beliefs, our hopes and our desired outcomes. The patience of our patron saint of Prince Hall described here was by no means a passive patience. Prince Hall believed in a very active patience. He believed in a forceful patience. I believe that Prince Hall believed in the type of patience that allows you to plan and succeed. Lastly, pride. Prince Hall reminded those in attendance that day of the Haitian Revolution, which was a successful insurrection by enslaved Africans against French colonial rule that began in 1791. Prince Hall stated that, quote, my brethren, let us remember what a dark day it was with our African brethren six years ago in the French West Indies. Nothing but the snap of the whip was heard from morning to evening, hanging, breaking on the wheel, burning, and all manner of tortures were inflicted on those unhappy people. But blessed be God, the scene has changed. Unquote. I believe in reminding brothers that even when the circumstances are dark and bleak, victory can still be had when you are fighting the good fight and getting into what the late great brother John Lewis calls good trouble. So today, in 2020, with all the things that's going on in the United States, anytime I discuss any aspect of Prince Hall and Prince Arfrey and Masonry, in our history, I like to end with the quote uh, of the late Masonic historian, Joseph Walks, when he said, um, the history of Prince Hall Freemasonry is actually the history of the African-American experience in this country. Within our jurisdiction and many, other, many others throughout this country, I've witnessed our ancient and honorable fraternity engage fellow citizens in voter education, registration and mobilization efforts. I've seen us understand the moment in history that we're currently in, and I've seen Prince Harvey Freemason step up and lead efforts within our community. I've seen sympathy shown to our neighbors and understanding that we must assist them in understanding 
and patience and pride when it comes to what we need to do as Prince Hall Freemasons. So thank you again. And uh, our history is definitely, as I said earlier, something that we not only should cherish, but I think it's something that we should also study so that it can direct our efforts in today's times. Long live Prince Hall Freemasonry and long live the Grand Lodge of uh, the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio. Thank you, Brother Stringer. Thank you so much, Right Woodford. We appreciate that. That glimpse into the history of our founder. And I'm certain that all are a bit more appreciative of what he stood for and understanding some of the trials and struggles that he went through. I'm going to take a bit of liberty as Master of Ceremonies. And I'm going to draw a page from one of our participants today, our Grand Chaplain, the Reverend James H. Willis Sr., who as a preacher of the gospel, it's customary within the church prior to the sermon that the choir should sing a song to lift the spirits and put us in the right mood. I'm going to take this opportunity to implore upon the Right Worshipful Lawrence Coleman, our grand soloist, to once again just give us a tidbit more of Jesus is a rock in the weary land before bringing on the next speaker of the evening. Right Worshipful Coleman, if I may implore you, sir, we need to hear just a bit more of that rock in the weary land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land. A weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And a shelter in the time of storm. Oh my goodness, he's our Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. No man can do like Jesus, not a mumbling word he said. He went walking down to Lazarus' grave and he raised him from the dead. Oh my goodness, he's a, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, in the shelter in the time of storm. Oh my goodness, he's a, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. Yes, he is. Thank you so much. Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that our founder, Prince Hall, was also a minister a preacher of the gospel. And I'm certain that given the opportunity, he would have had a song before he spoke. We have two individuals that we have engaged today to bring you information concerning our founder, whom we revere. And in order for you to understand of what they stand for, at this time, I'm going to call upon right worshipful Prester Pickett, Grand Orator, Ecclesiastes number 120, to introduce our first speaker of the day. Right, which will pick it. Anon A. Rucker of Pride of the Valley, Lodge number 95. Retired Judge Fanon A. Rucker was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. He graduated from Hampton University and the University of Cincinnati College of Law. After completing his studies and passing the bar, Judge Rucker became a Cincinnati prosecutor. After several years as a prosecutor, Judge Rucker entered private practice where he focused on the area of civil rights, 
employment, municipal law, and the general civil litigation, and also served as the prosecutor for three villages. Judge Rucker represented clients in many high profile civil cases in state and federal court at both the trial and appellatic levels. In 2007, Judge Rucker was appointed to the Hamilton County Municipal Court. Judge Rucker served as an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati for several years where he taught a class on law history. Judge Rucker's biggest contribution to the legal community is the mentoring he provides and has provided to high school, college, and law students, as well as young lawyers. Judge Rucker has served in leadership on numerous boards and organizations. His motto in leadership is plan to leave it better than you find it, or let someone else take the lead. Under his leadership, the Black Lawyers Association membership roles significantly increased and a multi-tiered mentoring program was initiated. As head of his Masonic Lodge, Pride of the Valley. As head of the Masonic Lodge, Pride of the Valley, he implemented several new initiatives. He was one of the primary architects of a joint effort between the NAACP and the Masonic Order in a continuing voter education series. He currently serves as the president of a foundation that funds initiatives focused on ensuring transparency and participation in local government. Professionally, Judge Rucker authored more than 400 written decisions, occasionally appears on a national news talk show discussing court topics, hosts student law clerks year round and served as the elected secretary of the State Association of Municipal and County Judges. Judge Rucker has been called upon by the Supreme Court to serve on various boards and commissions. After 12 years on the bench. Judge Rucker retired from his position to return to private practice and to run for county prosecutor. Judge Rucker can often be found delivering messages from church pulpits, giving keynote addresses to large groups on a variety of subjects, speaking to students or community groups, serving as an MC for public or private events, and even delivering spoken word poetry to various groups. Judge Rucker's father, Robert Dennis Rucker Jr served on the Indiana Supreme Court for 18 years. His mother, Jacqueline Pace Rucker, is a lawyer and Lutheran minister. Judge Rucker has two children, a son and a daughter. Hear ye him. First, let me apologize. I thought that was my short bio. <laughs> <laughs> My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside let freedom reign, our fathers God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing, long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. We are gathered here today to celebrate the legacy and connection between our visionary founding father and the country of the fraternity's founding. What is Prince Hall Americanism Day? The most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Arkansas explains what this day is all about. As the Christian has a revival, the Muslim has a pilgrimage to Mecca, so do Prince Hall Masons have revivals, and they are called Prince Hall Americanism Day, celebrated on or as close to September 12th of each year. 
It is a time for the Prince Hall Mason to take stock of his life, renew his faith in God, country, and fraternity, which will include his neighbor. It is a time to renew his faith in God, his patriotism to his country, and his duty to mankind. It is in the truest sense a Masonic revival. Now, of course, all of us know, at least we should know, as was recounted by the grand historian earlier, our basic history, that those 15 black men were raised to the sublime degree on that Monday morning, excuse me, that Monday evening, March 6, 1775, in that Boston military lodge. And that a year later, on July 3rd, 1776, they received a commission as African Lodge Number no. 1. July 3rd, 1776. Interesting. <laughs> Prince Hall Americanism Day. It almost seems a universe of contradictions and ironies that Prince Hall Masons would celebrate anything about this country and our connection to it. Especially mind-blowing and head-scratching is that the commission granting the independence of African Lodge Number no. 1 and these 15 black members in Boston was given one day before the youngest, now the most powerful nation on earth, declared its independence from despotic rule, just 300 miles away in Philadelphia. Now, of course, the major point is contention for those of us who are connected by blood and experience to blacks who were brought here is the history of the treatment of our ancestors, grandparents, parents, us, our kids, our grandkids. I think you understand what I'm saying. Look, last year, we recognized 400 years since the first Africans were brought to the shores of the New World. These 20 plus black people were on a Portuguese slave ship that was hijacked by a British pirate ship called the White Lion. The pirates sold or traded them for food and supplies, and this was the beginning of the legacy of African Americans. Keep in mind, this was roughly 100 years before the birth of modern masonry in 1717 in that pub in England, which of course spread throughout the colonies very quickly. Why would we, the inheritors of the stings of hate and branding irons want to celebrate our connection to this country. Not only were our ancestors actively legally kidnapped and tortured and separated from families and sold as property, they were refused the empowering right simply to learn to read or vote or sue white folks in the county court systems for almost 200 years anywhere in this country and for almost 300 years in the South. Celebrate America? Yes. Prince Hall Americanism Day. Actually, I think it's an essential, empowering, logical thing for us as Prince Hall Masons to do. This day isn't a benign, accidental day of recognition. It's an active, motivational, proud, exciting day of remembrance and annual call to action. And it gives insight into the passion and resolve of the organizational architect under whose banner our organizational flags wave. We know Prince Hall didn't yield to subservience and second class citizenship. He didn't teach anything about being a second-class citizen, and he didn't demonstrate it. Just a few years after the Declaration of Independence, this, this Mason, th this man, stood on the floor of the Massachusetts State Legislature and advocated freedom for slaves and education for Black citizens. This man and other Black citizens started an independent school for Black children and funded it with their own dollars. The Christian and community leader 
engaged the founders of the Free African Society, you heard of them, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen, to join with him and to spread Masonic principles across the nation to other citizens that look like them. This fierce fighter met with George Washington to encourage the colonies to allow black soldiers to fight for independence under Washington's command. I have no doubt that wise visionary was very well aware of the plight of all those African blooded people enslaved in the South and subjected to second class citizenship all over the country and the history of their arrival here. I'm convinced he knew about it, but I'm also certain that he, like us, recognized that there would be no world power called the United States without that resilient, strong, skilled, spiritual race who came from the continent where civilization began and knowledge was perfected. Prince Hall knew. He knew of the strength of the people that survived the treacherous journey and then defied the orders and attempts of their capital to keep them in bondage. Prince Hall Americanism Day makes perfect sense. Prince Hall was was as much a founding father of this nation and a brick of this modern day house as was George Washington, as was Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin. Prince Hall Americanism Day makes sense because Prince Hall recognized that black people are as integral to the historic success or failure of this country as whites and that those who are the familial descendants of the first 20 Africans that were brought to Virginia 400 years ago are interwoven into every fiber of the American quilt as any other peoples in this country. Prince Hall Americanism Day makes logical sense because just appearing through the American window of history reveals an endless list of Masons, particularly Prince Hall Masons and Eastern Stars who have helped to shape the totality of this country's being and its movements and its and its and its entertainment and and its education and and its politics and its military victories brothers absalom jones and brother richard allen of course founders and, and allen being the first bishop of the AMI church brother martin delaney first black major in the united states military first black student at harvard medical school brother maynard jackson First black mayor of Atlanta, Brother John Johnson, founder and publisher of Ebony and Jet Magazine, Brother Daniel Chappie James, first four-star U.S. Army general, Brother Nelson Mandela, former president of South Africa, Brother Hiram Revels, first elected black U.S. senator, Brother Matthew Henson, famous explorer, Brothers Williams Count Basie, Duke Ellington and Nat King Cole, musical geniuses, Brother A. Philip Randolph, activist, founder of the Pullman Car Porters, Brother John Lewis, U.S. Representative from Georgia, Brother Marshall Falk, superstar football player, Brother Shaquille O'Neal, basketball megastar, Brother Ben Hooks, former NAACP director, Brother Jesse Jackson, founder of Rainbow Coalition and Operation Push, Brother Booker T. Washington, founder of Tuskegee University, Brother W.E.B. Du Bois, philosopher, philosopher, creator of the Talented Tenth Concept, Brothers Edgar Love and Ronald Coleman and Ernest Just, founders of Omega Psi Phi. Brothers George Biddle Kelly, founder of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. Brother Doug Wilder, first black governor elected after Reconstruction. And that was while I was in college. Brother Garrett Morgan, inventor of the traffic light. Brother Jesse Owens, brother Judge Thurgood Marshall. Sisters, we can't forget the sisters. Rosa Parks, mother of the Montgomery bus boycott and the civil rights movement. Sister Maya Angelou, poet laureate extreme. Sister Maxine Waters, United States representative from California. Look, we can be here all day, but you get the point. Prince Hall Americanism Day is an absolute declaration that America in its entirety, the good and the bad, is our America, from Prince Hall to Grandmaster Chester Christie of Ohio. And part of that declaration is a call to not sit idly by and watch the events of this place happen, but to be an active part of making things happen. And this is not some new philosophy. 
Prince Hall Masons over the past 225 years have given us an example and blueprint to follow. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I say, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Look, I get the discrimination and the racist past and present of our great country and how it compels a great many of us to fold our arms and turn our backs and keep our hats on when we hear the Pledge of Allegiance or my country tis of thee at the opening of sporting events where we're conscripted to be the entertainment that they're there to watch. We lament over the intolerant rants of our current president who specifically said he feels no obligation to understand the anger and the, and the dissent of black Americans. We angrily shake our collective fist at the multiple stories of whites calling the police on black citizens for living our daily lives and engaging in our chosen vocations and then watch as their irrational calls go unpunished. We shed tears at the recognition that our African-American family continues to be overly incarcerated, underrepresented, and burdened by disparaging wealth and health disparities. I get it. We all get it. But Prince Hall Americanism Day is about reinvigorating us to swell our chest and be the change agents to propel us individually and community collectively to successes we have not yet experienced. Prince Hall Americanism Day is about bowing our heads and saying thank you God for allowing us to persevere and thrive even in the face of seemingly indomitable odds. Prince Hall Americanism Day is about standing up, locking arms with one another and saying this country, our country, this country's history is our history from the beginning to the present. And there would be no United States of America without Prince Hall Masons and Eastern Stars. And we are entitled to every bit of the spoils of the victory that our great country achieves as any other citizen. Thank you. And just remember, my country Tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee, I say, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, Judge Rucker for that invigorating, thought-provoking, and passionate delivery, informative as it is, to let us know about our founder, Prince Hall. Thank you so much, sir. And for all who are on this, our first ever virtual Prince Hall Americanism Day, I, sir, on their behalf, applaud you for them. Thank you so much. God bless you. We have also today another individual who has, through his own experiences, delivered to us some of the great moments in our Prince Hall lives. And to introduce this individual, I will call again upon Right Worshipful Prester Pickett, who will present our next speaker at this time. Right, Wishful Pickett. The Honorable Past Grandmaster Reverend Charles Davis has a treasure in gold that he received because of his 50 year anniversary with his wife, the lovely past matron Joyce. E. Davis. They've been married for 52 years. He's the pastor 
of Allen Temple, A-M-E, African Methodist Episcopal Church of Cleveland, Ohio, and owns his own business, C&J Control Corporation. Part of the legacy of Cleveland's finest, he retired from the Cleveland Police Department after 30 years of dedicated service. There, he was one of the founders of the Cleveland Police SWAT team. His Masonic career includes the following. Past master of Eureka Lodge number 52, two terms as the past deputy grand lecturer of the 7th Masonic District, past grand lecturer of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, past most excellent high priests of Royal Arch Masons, past illustrious potentate of El Hassa Temple number 28, past imperial deputy of the desert of the ancient Egyptian Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine of North and South America and its jurisdictions corporate, past patron of Bethel chapter number 58, order of the Eastern Star Prince Hall affiliate for three terms, Sovereign Grand Inspector General of the 33rd degree, past Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, free and accepted Masons. He has enlightened the Prince Hall family and the public about the history of Prince Hall as a featured speaker on Prince Hall programs, as well as engagements in the community and on the university level. His wisdom extends from generation to generation. Hear ye him. Right Wishful Davis, sir, you are on. Am I muted? Right Wishful Jerry Springer. We hear you now, sir. To Right Wishful Preston Pickett. Thank you for that introduction. I thank you very much for that introduction. Brother Pickett, to the most wishful Grand Master, of the most wishful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the State of Ohio, the Honorable Chester C. Christie, to the Grand Worthy Matron of Amaranth Chapter Order of the Eastern Star, Sister Renee Willis, to the Grand Worthy Patron of Amaranth Chapter, Order of the Eastern Star, Brother Gregory Allen, to all Grand Officers, past and present, to all heads of the concordant and appendant bodies, to the Worshipful Masters, to the Worthy Matrons, to the Officers, my sisters and brothers, friends and relatives, and everyone under the sound of my voice this evening, good evening. My scripture, if man dies, shall he live again. All the days of my appointed time, I shall wait until my change come. He will call and I will answer thee. Job 14, verse 14. I just want to pause for a minute to say my favorite Christian holiday is Easter. After all, I see little things that are added to Easter that I didn't particularly care about 
and that is one is the rabbit, the bunny rabbit they added to the Easter basket. I can't understand what it has to do with Easter at all. But never mind that I'll come back to it a little later on. In every history of mankind and organized bodies, there are some decisive circumstances, some all important event, some supreme moment of time within the affairs of that body to which the eyes of their posterity shall ever turn. And in the memories of the succeeding generations are distinguished as preeminently the epic of that people. The Masonic Convocation in the year 1717 marks the most important event in the history of Freemasonry this world over. That event is the spirit of circumstances which laid the foundation for Masonic condition as they exist today. There is no other organization in this world that so loudly and uncompromisingly proclaim and teach universal brotherhood to mankind and so consistently conform its practice to its declaration as this fraternal order. Freemasonry know no color, no creed, it knows no religion. It only proclaims to mankind that there is only one God and he is a grand architect of the universe. The introduction of Freemasonry among the Negro men in America is to the Negro Mason the event of the highest interest. Therefore, to us, it is of vital importance. With this history, we should thoroughly familiarize ourselves in its details. It is our duty to know for our own enlightenment also that we be able to defend our claims against the assault of prejudice and ignorance. I said prejudice because we are still segregated. Although in Ohio we have fraternal recognition, we are still segregated. I say ignorance because there is no organization in the world that has been so bitterly assailed by people who are totally ignorant to its cause at this fraternity order, both Masons and Eastern Stars. It should make no difference to us as far as our history is concerned. Whether they know or whether they do not know, what should matter to us is that we should know from whence we came. No history of Freemasonry is complete unless it tells the story about Prince Hall and 14 others who were the first to be inducted into the mysteries of Freemasonry in this country. On March 6, 1775, in a British army lodge attached to General Gage's 38-foot regiment, garrison in and out of the city of Boston, Massachusetts. Prince Hall, Cyrus Java, Benstein Slinger, Thomas Sanderson, Prince Taylor, Cato Spears, Boston Smith, Peter Bess, Ford Howard, Prince of Reed, John Canton, Peter Freeman, Benjamin Tiber, Birth New Form and Richard Lyle were all free color men, residents of the city of Boston were initiated, passed, and raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason by Right Worshipful J. B. Beth, Worshipful Master of Irish Constitutional Law 441. These were the first black men to be inducted into the mysteries of Freemasonry in this country. Although conferring the degree upon color men in London and about her colonial possession was no unusual thing. But in American colonies, this was the first known instance. Lodges in which degrees were conferred granted them the authority to meet as a lodge, to walk on St. John's Day and to bury their dead in a manner and in form, but they could not bestow any degrees, nor perform any other Masonic function. For nine years, the faithful and devoted brethren would assemble along with other brethren, and they enjoyed these limited privileges. But finally, after nine years and being in the desire of obtaining all the rights and benefits of a warranted law, Prince Hall, as a representative of these brethren, wrote a letter to Worshipful Master Moody, a Worshipful Master in a Lodge in London, and he requested that he read it at the Royal Grand Lodge of London. And on September 29, 1784, this letter was received and read at the Royal Grand Lodge of London. And a warrant was signed, sealed, and attested and granted to Prince Hall and his associate in the name and style of African Lodge number 459. Prince Hall, Worshipful Master, 
Thomas Sanderson Senior Warden, Boston Smith Junior Warden. These were the first black men to hold a Masonic office in this country. Although that warrant was issued in 1784, it was not received until three years later or until the failure of a brother Gregory, who was supposed to, while in London, call on the Grand Secretary, Right Worshipful William White, pay him the required fee and bring back the warrant for African Lodge number 459. But Captain James C. Scott, he was a seafaring man. Also the brother-in-law of John Hancock, who was one of the original sign of our American declarations of independence, was requested by Prince Hall while in London called on the Grand Secretary Right Wishful William White, pay him the required fee and bring back the warrant for African Lodge number 459. Captain James C. Scott did indeed, while in London, call on the Grand Secretary, Right Worshipful William White, paid him the required fee, and bought back the warrant for African Lodge number 459. Oh, what a joyous occasion it was. Quite naturally, the arrival of this warrant was going to call much rejoicing by this little band of Black Mason, and it was made the occasion of a public demonstration on St. John's Day, December the 27th, 1787. Nearly all the newspapers in Boston noticed it, but one newspaper spoke in a spirit of ridicule and called them the St. Black Lodge. Prince Hall wrote a letter to that newspaper, <clears throat> and he wrote, I quote what he wrote. He said, Mr. Draper, Mr. Fulson, I noticed a paragraph in your newspaper of the 31st of our celebration of the 27th, where you labored and styled us as St. Black Lodge, believing you intended to give us a fair and candidate statement of the fact I take the liberty to inform you that our title is not St. Black, but African Lodge, nor do we aspire after any high titles, only that the grand architect of the universe may diffuse in our hearts the true spirit of masonry, the love of God, and the love of our fellow men, which I humbly conceive to be the grand pillars of Freemasonry. With all due respect to the publisher, I take leave to subscribe myself as your obedient servant, Prince Hall, Wishful Master, unquote. <clears throat> Who was this black man? This man could write a letter of such substance during the time when Negroes were slaves and were not allowed to learn how to read and write. Who was Prince Hall? Prince Hall was born March 6, 1748 in Bridgetown, Barbados, West Indies. His father was Thomas Prince Hall. He was an Englishman. They say his mother's name was Kathy. They were free colored people. They were people of humble means, not too far removed from poverty. Thomas Prince Hall was a leather worker by trade and occupation. And at the early age of 12, young Prince was apprenticed to learn his father's trade. But him being ambitious for a brighter field and higher prospect, more than his country could offer him, he conceived the idea of coming to America. His mother and father said to have opposed it very decisively, but him being young, stubborn, and ambitious, nothing could change him from his course. So on February 16th, 1765, Prince being well now, 16 years of age, as a lot of young men did at that age, he left home to seek his fortune on a strange and new land. He having but just a little bit of money, he worked as a seaman upon the vessel of which he came. On March 16, 1765, after one month long journey, he arrived in Boston, Massachusetts. A strange land, no family, no friends, no relatives, no acquaintance. His pluck and resources were in urgent need and they did not fail him. He was a strong man with willing hands and four years of discipline that his father's apprenticeship trade implied he was not to be idle long. Soon he found employment. It is said that he was not only an industrial young man, he was frugal, thrifty, and economized because at the end of eight years, he saved enough from his earnings to become a landowner and a voter. Way back in 1784, early, Christian awakeness swept through the New England state. 
fan and fueled by three Methodist missionaries. I'm told that Richard Allen was one of them. He became a, Prince Hall became a close student of the Bible, and in due time, he went into ministry. It is said that he had formed what we call a most prosperous congregation. He became an early outspoken enemy of slavery and hesitated not to denounce it on all proper occasions. Upon one occasion, a member of his lodge, along with some more free colored men of Boston, were kidnapped by a captain of a vessel and was taken off to be sold as slaves. Prince Hall wrote a letter to the governor, and, and, and when the governor and the senator saw that petition, all the signatures on it, they exerted their influence, and soon these men were returned to their family. Prince Hall, on the seventh day of December, 1807, after being about 60 years old and after a four-week bout with pneumonia, Prince Hall was called from labor to refreshment, and he was fittingly prepared for translation from this terrestrial to the celestial lodge. And I believe that he has joined the fraternity of spirits of just men made perfect. I want to go back to that rabbit just for a moment. If I was going to have an emblem or something that represents my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it wouldn't be a rabbit. I would use a butterfly. Charles L. Davis, past grandmaster of the most wishful prince all grand life, I would use a butterfly. And I want to tell you why. A butterfly start out like a worm. It is a worm on the ground. Lowly worm. There's nothing like the lowly Jesus. Nothing in this world is like the lowly Jesus. We don't have a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. He crawls on the ground and then he crawls up in a tree. Oh, I want you to know that tree has something to do with my Savior, Jesus Christ. He was crucified on a tree. And he builds him a cocoon up in that tree. And if you look at the cocoon, it kind of shaped like a tomb. He clothes himself in that cocoon. Like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they rolled the stone and closed his tomb. And he was in there for three days and three nights. And while he was in there, transformation took place. That cocoon, that, that, that uh, butterfly, that caterpillar is in that cocoon. And while he's in there, a transformation takes place. After a while, that door come open. That door, that cocoons come open. And like Jesus, that door came open. The angels rolled away. Jesus came out of that cocoon with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. That butterfly comes out as a beautiful butterfly. And he spreads his wing and he will fly. He flies away. Oh, it's nothing like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away. In the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. That butterfly took wings and it flew away. You know, Prince Hall funerals hell in Boston. Massachusetts. It was attended by a large group of citizens of Boston of all race. I'm telling you that a modern monument was erected to his memory, consisting of a broken column resting on a marble base. It is said to have taste and significant design, give credit to every brother who will have the occasion to visit it. Oh, some glad morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away to that home where joy should never end. I'll fly away. They tell me that every Grand Lodge was represented that day in every history of mankind and organized body. There are some decisive circumstances, some all important events some supreme moment of time within the affairs of that body to which the eyes of their posterities shall ever turn. 
and in the memory of the succeeding generation are distinguished as preeminently the epic of that people. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home. On God's celestial show, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away. In the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Right Wishful Charles Davis, past Grandmaster of Eureka Lodge Number 52. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, our minds and our hearts have truly been refreshed this afternoon. <coughs> well, we have heard from those who have enlightened us and have titillated the very souls within, not only with information about our founder whom we so revere, but they have also enlightened us about this country, my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. I wish at this time to thank our most worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Chester C. Christie for allowing us to present to you this program this day. And for the information of those who do not know it, I'm going to go down a list with the exception of these individuals, our Grand Chaplain, Most Virtual Past Grand Master James H. Willis Sr., our Grand Historian, Right Wishful Antonio O'Kaffe, and our grand soloist, Right Wishful Lawrence Coleman, all remaining participants on today's program are grand orators of the Most Wishful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, namely myself, Right Wishful Jerry D. Springer, Equity 121, Right Wishful Prester Pickett, Ecclesiastes number 120, Right Worshipful Fanon Rucker, Pride of the Valley number 95, and Right Worshipful Reverend Charles Davis, Eureka Lodge number 52, all Grand Orators of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, Free and Accepted Nation. Most Worshipful, we humbly thank you for allowing us this opportunity to present to you and to this august body a bit of information and hopefully a bit that we did not know before about our founder, Prince Hall, and about Americanism Day, which we celebrate. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of the Grand Orators and all participants on today's program. It is now time for our closing remarks. And I will announce to you the order in which they will come. And it has been my pleasure and my humble honor to have served as your master of ceremonies for this, our first ever virtual and our annual Prince Hall Americanism Day. The remarks will be as such. They will come first from our grand worthy patron, Brother Gregory L. Allen, past patron of St. John's chapter number 25, who will introduce our grand worthy matron, past matron Renee Willis of May chapter number 62, after which I shall return briefly. Grand worthy patron, Gregory Allen, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today, the Princeton fraternity has over 4,500 lodges worldwide, 46 independent jurisdictional, and a membership of over 300,000 
Mason worldwide. Proud, the father of Black Masonry has left a legacy that will be remembered throughout our times and in the future to come. I'd like to commend our most worshipful Grandmaster, the most worshipful Prince of Grand for the city of Ohio, the Honorable Justice C. Creed, and his team for putting together such a memorable and successful Prince of Mechanism Day program event. Now, I have the honor and duty to bring forth at this time the 43rd Grand Wavy Matron of Emirates Grand Chapter Incorporated, Order of Eastern Stars, Prince Hall Affiliated for the State of Ohio, and that's our own very, our very own sister Renee Willis. To the most worshipful Grand Master, Church of C. Christie, and all that are virtually assembled this afternoon, good afternoon. I bring greetings as the 43rd Grand Worthy Matron of Amaranth Grand Chapter, Order of the Eastern Star for the State of Ohio. Um, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to join you on your celebration today. Um, it's been a pleasure to listen to the virtual statewide Prince Hall and Americanism Day program. Um, my scripture is Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all thy getting, get understanding. Your program helps us to gain enlightenment of our founding father. It's humbling to be reminded of the sacrifices and the problems that he endured um, to recognize his leadership in founding this organization. And it's amazing to know the political activity and the other causes that he championed, some of which we're still uh, can relate to today. Um, it gives us a thirst for uh, research of Prince Hall, the man himself, and also of Prince Hall, uh, the Masonic organization. So we thank you for including us in your program. We've had to adjust to doing things a little differently this year, and I commend you on an excellent Zoom program. Um, I also want to thank everyone that joined the um, Zoom State of the Order recap that we did for Amaranth Grand Chapter on August 30th. Um, thank you for your continued support as we navigate through this pandemic. Um, let me acknowledge my husband who's here um, participating in this program with me. Um, I also want to acknowledge all of the grand trustees from Amaranth Grand Chapter who are also connected to this call. I hope that you've seen them in the gallery of uh, photos, but um, I want to acknowledge the grand trustees. And also, there's a lot of the past grand worthy matrons and past grand worthy patrons from Amaranth Grand Chapter that are connected also, as well as a number of our sisters and brothers. So we all thank you for allowing us to listen in um, and enjoy your program today. I once again want to thank Most Worshipful Pan, uh, Grand Master Chester Christie for allowing me time on your program. Uh, my motto is, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, kindness is contagious. So please continue to reach out to each other, to encourage each other, and to pray for each other. Um, God bless each and every one of you. Stay uh, safe and healthy as we navigate through this coronavirus, and we will meet again. And once again, thank you, Prince Hall Grand Lodge. Thank you, Grandworthy Matron. And as always, there's always something, the, I forget the name of that principle, that says, if something can go wrong, it will. Well, there's one thing that I fail to do. <laughs> and if you will allow me, all of you at this time, on your behalf, to the Reverend Right Worshipful Charles Davis, on behalf of us all, sir, we applaud you. And we thank you again. Thank you. Most certainly. And now it is my honor as I prepare to take my leave to bring to you the Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, free and accepted Masons from Mount Calvary Lodge number 76, who has a specific duty to perform. No, I change that. Who has a pleasure to perform. <laughs> After which, when 
that individual has been introduced and has spoken, we will then call upon the Reverend Most Worshipful Pastor and Master James H. Willis Sr. Uh, to give us the benediction, if he's still with us. I know that he had a funeral to go to. He, he's still here. Thank you so much. So at this time, I give you the right worshipful Deputy Grand Master, Most Worshipful Prince R. Grand Lodge of Ohio, Right Worshipful Jerry R. Ellison. Thank you so very much, Right Worshipful Brother Jerry Springer. And it is my pleasure to bring before you the 64th Most Worshipful Grand Master, an individual that is building on the firm foundation of our historic legacy, who is standing firmly in the footprints of Prince Hall. He is a child of God. He is my friend. One and all, please let us receive the most wishful Grand Master of the most wishful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the state of Ohio, the Conservator of Masonry, the Honorable Chester C. Christie. Thank you, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master Ellison. Uh, my friend and my brother, thank you for that gracious introduction. Uh, to the elected and appointed Grand Lodge officers, Worshipful Masters, Past Masters, Wardens, and Brethren of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, to Grand Worthy Matron, Grand Worthy Patron of Amaranth Grand Chapter, to Amaranth Grand and chapter trustees, and all of the entire Prince Hall Masonic family, good afternoon. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and I thank you for sharing a portion of your Sunday afternoon as we gather together virtually to pay tribute to and to honor and celebrate our founder and our patriarch, Prince Hall. Sisters and brothers, not even this pandemic is going to stop us from covering and convening this sacred and time-honored observance. I want to begin by thanking our grand orators, our grand historian, uh, the chairman of our music department, and our grand soloist, uh, and our grand chaplain uh, for leading and for lending their oratorical, musical, and spiritual gifts, and certainly for sharing their tremendous talents with us as they enabled us to make today's observance a truly historic and a memorable one. To Right Worshipful Jerry Springer, who chaired the planning of the committee, uh, I want to thank you, sir, for organizing the program and for coordinating uh, all of the creativity and the ingenuity that was brought to the table by these very talented brethren, uh, and for an absolutely masterful job, as usual, serving as our master of ceremonies. Let's Please give him a, a virtual round of applause for a phenomenal job well done. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, to Right Worshipful uh, Brother Pickett, uh, thank you, sir, for that stirring Pledge of Allegiance as only you can do, sir. Uh, and, and likewise for uh, your very capable introduction of our fantastic uh, presenters today. Uh, to Right Worshipful Coleman, Thank you, sir, for favoring us uh, with that very fitting uh, and very stirring rendition of Jesus is a Rock. Very fitting and very appropriate for these times. As always, sir, you uh, have blessed us uh, by sharing the enormous talent with which the good Lord has blessed you and for doing it to his glory. Thank you, sir. Uh, right, Worshipful Kathy, as always, sir, you have provided uh, additional valuable information for our edification and for uh, our Masonic education. You know, we greatly appreciate how you add further light and more light to our pathway as we uh, travel this Masonic journey. Uh, and I especially want to thank you, sir, for sharing the actual words of Prince Hall to encourage us in this time of challenge. To right worshipful Attorney Fanon Rucker, our next Hamilton County prosecutor, and to uh, past Grand Master Reverend Charles Davis. Thank you to each of you 
for your stirring, informative, culturally relevant presentations, and for reminding us of the significance of this revival we call Prince Hall Americanism Day. As stated by uh, Attorney Rucker, a day of remembrance and a call to action. God bless you both. You are truly two of the treasures of this jurisdiction. I, I can't begin to thank you enough for lending your talents and sharing with us today. Uh, thank you for the historical tribute. Thank you for all that you brought back to our recollection in, in some instances uh, for further edification of most of us with regard to Prince Hall. Thank you again. Uh, we certainly want to thank Right Worshipful Tony Dye, uh, Right Worshipful William Benyard, and uh, Worshipful Brother Marcel Ennis for your technical assistance and your support on this Zoom conference. Um, and I certainly can't forget our, our webmaster, Brother Right Worshipful Brother Bad Stallworth, for all of your timely assistance, keeping us informed virtually through both your messages and for your, your posts. Thank you very, very much, sir. We want to acknowledge all of the uh, most worshipful past grandmasters, the past grandmasters, uh, past grandworthy matrons, and past grandworthy patrons who were able to participate today. Uh, to all of the other heads of houses of the appendant and concordant bodies of our most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge and our Prince Hall family, thank you for your participation today and for your continued assistance and your support. Uh, I'm going to ask you all to please uh, look for a meeting invitation coming shortly from me uh, so that we can all come together for uh, a bit of a status update and that we can discuss our plans going forward. Look forward to uh, bringing everyone together and meeting. Uh, brothers and sisters, I really felt that uh, it was critically important that we hold today's observance, even though it had to be virtual. Uh, the original vision was that we would have a, a statewide day of service on yesterday, on the 12th, followed by a statewide observance today. Uh, the pandemic got in the way of allowing this to happen, unfortunately, as planned. But I want to thank the lodges, the Eastern Star chapters, and the other houses uh, that have been coming together to serve the needs of our communities, uh, our first responders, and all of our frontline service providers during the pandemic. I am especially proud of the assistance that we provided to our communities uh, with a number of different things, uh, particularly with completing the census uh, and our voter awareness, voter education, and voter registration efforts. Uh, uh, before I forget, I want to thank everyone uh, today uh, who contributed to the uh, NAACP Legal Defense and Education uh, Foundation. Uh, and especially because of, of the, uh, the many things that uh, they support and continue to sustain uh, and provide legal assistance for, uh, especially those things that are uh, part of the efforts uh, that we continue to support today. Uh, sisters and brothers, let me uh, leave you with this thought. Uh, if we truly want to uh, honor Prince Hall, and to show respect for the principles upon which he founded our beloved order, then let's get out and vote in person or by absentee ballot, uh, and let's vote early. This is the most consequential election of our lifetime. Let's make sure that we are continuing to equip and to empower and assist everyone that we know is eligible to vote. And we really ought to start in our own lodges and our recent start chapters by making sure that all of our members are eligible to vote. Let's do everything in our power to ensure that we have the largest level of voter, pop, uh, voter participation uh, in our nation's history. And whatever you do, make sure that you support Fanon Rucker, for Hamilton County Prosecutor, and Sister Alicia Reese, for Hamilton County Commissioner, as well as all of the other sisters and brothers who may be uh, seeking elective office uh, in November. Uh, I think without a shadow of doubt, uh, Fast Master and Right Worshipful Brother Rucker clearly demonstrated to all of us today why he absolutely needs to be the next Hamilton County Prosecutor. We, 
continue to thank him. He's a treasure uh, that we're proud to claim. And we now need to have that, that opportunity or that same talent uh, to, to lead and guide all the legal determinations that are made in Hamilton County. Thank all of you again for your continued assistance and your support uh, for being here in, in attendance today. Again, to uh, Past Master Springer, uh, to all of the, the committee, thank you for a fantastic job. Uh, you, uh, you did my heart good today. Uh, and we are all blessed and uh, we, we benefit from uh, your hard work. And, and thank you for truly, truly commemorating Prince Hall in a manner that was appropriate. May God continue to richly bless uh, each and every one of you and your families. And may his hand of protection cover and shield you and yours until we have the opportunity to meet again. God bless you all. I think we are about to turn the, uh, the program over and, and pass the microphone on to uh, most worthful past grandmaster, uh, Reverend Dr. James H. Willis Sr. If the Reverend Doctor is still with us. He's still here. All right, thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much, Grandmaster. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we come now to the close of this event, one that you ordained. And at the beginning, we invited you in, and you were very present through the whole program. As a matter of fact, you were not only present, you led it, and we thank you for that. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing those from across the state to be able to join in as we so vividly heard information today about Prince Hall. We thank you for just doing what you do, and that is letting your will be done. We ask now as we get ready to close that you continue to bless our Grand Master and his cabinet, bless our Grand Worthy Matron and her cabinet as we continue to do the work of you that you so diligently require us to do. We thank you for that. And now we say, as we get ready to leave, we thank you, O oh God, for joining us together. And now as we get ready to depart, we pray that you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. We ask it for his sake. Amen. Amen. So more to be. So more to be. Amen. So more to be. Amen. God bless you all and thank you. So more to be. Thank you, Most Rush. So more to be. So more to be. So more to be. So more to be. Have a good one, Grand. Thank you all. Most Rush. So more to be. So more to be. Outstanding. Thank you all. So more to be. That was great. That was great. Yeah. Great program. Good, good. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Grand Worthy Matron. Take care. Thank you. Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you all. God bless. Good evening, everyone, and most worshipful, wonderful program. God Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brother Coleman, for your participation, brother. Sure. Thank you for sharing the talent with you. Good afternoon. Brother Hunt, good to see you, sir. Illustrious sir, good afternoon. How you doing? Great job, most wonderful grandmaster. Great program. Great wonderful. Thank you, sir. God bless. Appreciate your participation. Thank you, sir. Vice illustrious sir, how you doing, brother Graham? <laughs>